G'day. Last time I used the four jaw chuck on the rotary table, uh, I noticed that it was a bit bell mouthed. Now I'll explain that in a minute. Um, conventional fix for that is to mount up on a lathe and use an abrasive something or other to work to grind the jaws out. Uh, I don't like that terribly much for reasons I'll explain. So today I'm doing it the way that I think it's probably better done. When we talk about a chuck being bell mouthed, what we're meaning is that the, the the jaws where it grasps the material are splayed out, a bit like a bell. And so instead of gripping uh, some round stock on in three lines effectively, you have three points and so it's, it's shaking around the place. Now, as I said, the conventional fix is you put a, uh, an abrasive device, a Dremel or something like that in there and grind away the, the high spots. It's, this is way exaggerated. I don't like that for several reasons. One of them is that as soon as you do that, you run the risk of throwing grit and things into your chuck. So you've got to, you've got to um, clean that out. You also need to make up some tooling to hold the Dremel. Now I've also been told, oh, you can do that by putting some be or using a boring bar with a carbide tip. Well, yeah, you might be able to do that and you wouldn't have the problem with the grit. How well that works, don't know. The other thing is that if you've got any wear in here, and I'll get to that in a minute, it could be those jaws are actually moving like that. And so to do this properly, you've got to put a ring in there and then remove material up to the ring, take the ring out, put the ring back in somewhere else and finish the job. So you've, you run the risk of having a step, uh, discontinuity, all that sort of thing. If you put the ring on the outside to grind the inside and these things are loose, what you could find is that you're actually making the problem worse. So that's, that's another thing. And the last uh, issue I have with this sort of thing is that yeah fine it might be bell mouthed but is it wear on the jaws is it wear in the in the in the slots um, is it ha has this been bent you know has someone has some gorilla used the chuck in the past and really graunched on it and and um, you know twisted things so my approach is let's check it out geometrically and just make sure that everything is is what it should be and then look at, you know, how can we correct those jaws. This is the four jaw chuck I'm talking about. Uh, I've clamped a 19 diameter test bar in here. This is the one I use on my lathe and I've, I haven't centered or anything. I've just got it in there so it's roughly in the middle. But what you might be able to pick up, there's a, there's a little bit of gap uh, there that the light is coming through around the, the, the teeth. That's what we're trying to get rid of. The first thing you need to do with these is, is look at the chuck. Uh, it's an old chuck, it's a bit worn. You know, I've got a little bit of movement of the jaws there. That could be contributing. I've now taken the jaws out and I'm just having a look at the surfaces that they're running on uh, to see whether there's any burrs or anything like that that might be kicking things up. Now, you can see down here on the end of number three that there's a couple of indents which look very much like, you know, the front of the um, the jaw so I suspect that what's happened there is that someone's given that a right old smack and, and dented that in have a running a, a straight edge across there it doesn't feel like it's it's raised up um, number two's got a little bit of a mark there as well one of the things I discovered with these is that the surfaces that these run on are, are these ones and the ones underneath plus the side surfaces here the inside of these pays no, to, uh, pays no uh, role in, in guiding the jaw, which is worth knowing. So basically, if you look at the jaw, it means that that surface has got to be good, and that surface and that surface have got to be good. The next thing I want to do is actually see what these surfaces are like. I've got a dial indicator here. Uh, this is actually a tense indicator, so it's, it's you know relatively uh, precise. I've got a big elephant's foot indicator on it. Now, one of the things you need to watch with these is if you're just using the edge, they can unscrew. So you need to watch for that. But what I'm going to do is just put that on the on that surface and run that through. And you can see that it's not moving an enormous amount right towards the ends of this. Uh, where we've got, we've got some of that damage, but for the most of it, it's staying pretty flat. I mean, that's, that's within a thousand. The last check I want to do is with this little jig that I've made up. 
what it's doing is it's it's mirroring or mimicking the the, the chuck in that I've got a a piece of plate here that I've uh, ground down to um, you know very close to, to size for size for the for the, the hole there it, that slot should be parallel to this surface which means that when I put my cylindrical square up there that should give me um, a right angle measuring the the rest of these they're all a little bit out so part of this jig I, I made it sort of dual purpose uh, that surface there is at right angles to this surface here so what I'm going to do is set that up on the surface grinder I've got that strap there to, to clamp that I'm going to run the surface grinder across that and hopefully just take a lick off that and get everything back to to um, well this surface and that surface being perpendicular I have my roughed out bit of stock here. This is, I think it's a portion of a, uh, an old die set. So I'm pretty sure that this surface and this surface are 90 degrees to each other. I'm gonna put a square on there that, that confirms that. But if it wasn't, this is how I'd establish that. I've got a, an angle plate here and it's, it's clamped to the table and I'm running a dial up and down using the vertical travel moving this up and down until I get a, a, a zero, zero reading or zero change. And if I do get some, I can shim the, you know, this end or this end to bring it back into square. But what that'll give me is a vertical plane which is aligned with the, uh, the Z axis of the mill. Now you're making the assumption that the mill is, is properly made and it's the, the planes are all square to each other, but um, that's, a, that's a reasonable assumption to make. Uh, you know, you, you may have to, if you've got a, um, one of these mini mills, you may have to tram a few things to, to check that, but that's, that's the assumption we're making. What I'll then do, I'll put a spacer in there, I'm going to put a bit of rod there just to give myself a, a little bit of extra height. I can clamp that on and then I can just do a very light skim across the top there and that should mean then that that surface and that surface are square. I'll just run a light skim across here to um, get that you know, flat, perpendicular to. Before I did that, I put a, a dial indicator on there and, and sort of from here to here, I was getting uh, 0.01 of a millimeter uh, increase. Uh, and from here to here, I was getting uh, 0.05. Now the 0.05 is just that surface down there. And that's just, you know, roughly machine. It's not going to be doing anything. So that doesn't worry me too much, but that across there did. And so, uh, I took a, as I said, I took a skim. So this surface should now be perpendicular to this surface as good as the mill will uh, allow me with the, with the geometry I've got. The next surface I want to do is to get that surface, which is, one of my, is, is my datum surface, and this one is square from that. I want to get this surface parallel with that. Uh, and, the, and so that, that will then mean that this surface is going, to be para, uh, is going to be perpendicular to this one, which is actually the, the target. Because I can do some measuring with, with uh, this surface, so I, I do want to make sure that this, in, this one and this one are parallel. Now, this is a, a used mill. It's got all sorts of dings and chips and things in the, the table. Some people run over these with stones or files or all that sort of thing. Um, you know, I could do that, but I'd be chasing my tail a bit, I think, if I, if I uh, was serious about it. So what I'm going to do instead is, I've just got a bit of aluminium scrap here. I'm going to clamp this down, and I'm going to take a light skim off this. And that's going to give me a surface which is, um, how would you say, in the, in the XY plane, is probably the best way of putting it. Then to get, that, to get this surface parallel is just a matter of a Z shift. And so I can, I can do that relatively easily and I'll use a, a, a clamp and a, and a toe clamp here to hold this down and then I'll just carefully take off a, uh, a skim off this to get this parallel. A little bit earlier I was saying, you know, you may need to check your, how vertical the, the vertical axis is. And I guess some of you are asking, well, how do I do that? Well, if you do this sort of thing, well, you've established an XY um, plane, so you know a bit of bit of 
uh, plate, aluminium, steel, doesn't really matter. Where you've, you've gone across that and you've machined it very carefully, you've got your, your head trammed to the table and all that sort of thing, you have a, 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 an ideal flat surface. You can then put a cylindrical square or any square really on that and do the same thing I did um, to establish that uh, the, 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 the plane of the angle plate being vertical with a, with a gauge. And by that you'll be able to tell with a, with a known square item on, a, on a, a flat surface, you'll be able to tell whether your um, z-axis is square to the, the xy. I've got my part clamped to the, the, the flat surface. I've now taken that down to dimension, which was uh, 10 millimeters, and that's, that's all I wanted. One thing I would point out too is, if you're, if you're using toe clamps, you only ever want to use them on one side of the job. Okay, you want to have a fixed thing on the other because these things work by, well in this case, an eccentric. And so if you have two opposing each other, if one comes loose, the other one comes loose. Uh, so doing it this way with a, with a fixed strap, and this is just a strap I made up with a couple of holes in it for suiting both here and the drill press, um, much safer, much, much easier way to do things. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be. I'm doing this very carefully because I don't want to have this thing flicking off at me. You might be able to pick up there, just going to move that into the light a bit better. These three, four uh, teeth, for want of a better word, I've got bright spot there, there, and a little bit there, and a couple of bits over the other side, but I haven't got anything down here, and I haven't got anything on that one. So that's actually suggesting that this jaw is high in the middle there. So I'll continue with this until I just get clean up, and that's why I've put the, the texture on there. Then put the other jaws in. Hopefully they'll all be the same amount, and go from there. Uh, as I said, that's only half a thou, so you know there's, there's not much in it, but at the same time, it does look like there is some, some distortion in the jaws. This is the first jaw off the, off the grinder, but to me that looks like I'm, I'm much better off. If you recall from the from the, uh, the clean-up marks, there was a, a sort of a bulge in the middle there, uh, and this looks like it's, it's pretty flat. Now, one of the problems with doing this is that that surface did have a, a slight concave to it. Because I've run across with a surface grinder, it's now flat. That shouldn't matter too much. This is the point where I wish to uh, proclaim victory and uh, have my victory party and all the rest of it, but uh, it's not quite worked. Uh, that's a 0.15 of a millimetre feeler, so 6 thou. I can just get that down a little bit. So I think what's happened here is the, 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 the jaws are worn or the slides are worn just enough that that can kick up. And so what I'm going to have to do is put a jaw back in my jig here and work out how much I need to uh, kick the, the front of that up to get the heel of the jaw, the bit down the bottom, um, down six thou relative the, to the top. I'm pretty happy with this now. Uh, that's a, a 0.05 millimeter feeler gauge and I can't get that in uh, anywhere there. So that's, uh, that's all good. Eventually what I did was I, I had the jaw clamped in there and I jacked the front of that up 0.1 of a millimeter and that was enough using the indicator to get that 0.15, um, should we say, compensation in there for the wear. And um, that's the result. I've got a, a nice solid sort of uh, chuck there, so I'm, I'm very happy with that. Uh, I now have to do a friend's uh, three jaw. Uh, and based on the experiments I did here, I think it, it, it should work. So uh, there you go. Uh, my version of uh, grinding a bell mouth chuck. And uh, I, I think, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure, but I think that this, is, this would probably be the way, as in on a, on a surface grinder or something like that, that they'd do it in the factory. They wouldn't mount it up in a chuck, stick it in a lathe and grind it that way. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, thanks for watching. See you for the next one.